1946, 1950s was a very rich period. I like, I like to call it the golden decade, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, the people that I covered, this is, this is quite fascinating, because the subject matter of a photographer sometimes is as important, or maybe even more important, than the technique that he uses, or the style that he uses. All right, now, the people that I photographed, and right here and now, please, if you call me a name dropper, you will probably be correct. All right, Humphrey Bogart, John Wayne, uh, Judy Garland, Jimmy Dean, uh, Jack Lemon, Cary Grant, Gary Cooper. I mean, that's really name dropping. But the fact is that if I did the same technique shooting pictures, let's say, in Peoria, of the mayor, <clears throat> of the school board, and I did the same brilliant, the same technique, brilliant or otherwise, I don't think anybody would care. But the fact that I have these names, and so many of these names have become cult figures, have become American immortals, uh, puts me in, the, in a very strange position of having very valuable material. And I think more, mostly because of the subject's names, and to a lesser degree, because of the photographic validity of, of that material. The wisdom of the period in the 50s, 40s, was the illusion, the glamour view of, of the, the female, of course, and also the male had a glamorous, glamorous side to them. Now, any of us who are working with these people recognize that there's a human element, the human equation with them after, you, after you, you divorced yourself from the imagery put together by the publicity department, you realize you had people that were just as human as anybody. They had their foibles, they had their vulnerabilities, and very often you could see them. You could see the nervousness, you could see the apprehension, you could see even the insecurity on people that you normally would think were, were, were bigger than life. And I was drawn, I was drawn inexorably to the human part of them. So the consequence of that was that I would even play to that. I, for instance, different photographers have different ways of working with these people, and I think the key ingredient for all of us is that the people we're photographing should be as comfortable with us around as possible. Because even under the best conditions, it, it, it's, I personally, uh, as I sit before this camera here, I'm not 100% comfortable. So I, I, I know that, that people cannot be 100% comfortable. But anyway, the minimum, the, the minimum possible discomfort works in your favor. So I would attempt to have somebody they know around sometimes talking to them or kidding them off camera so they would react. And if it's somebody they like and are entertained by, it always works for the photographer. If the photographer knows the subject well enough, if he's worked with them before, he can spill out to them his own problems and say, help me on this, I just, I need something where you're looser or where you're this or that. And in a case where you know them, you can always, almost always expect help in that way. So it's, it's a mixed bag. We all had different ways of working with them. But the key, the key has always been the maximum of comfort for the subject. Phil Stern's backstage, off-screen access to Hollywood personalities has resulted in a movie fan's treasure trove of photographs and a grab bag of hints for seizing the moment when photographing mercurial subjects. Jimmy Dean was a phenomenon in Hollywood uh, before his death. And then after his death, he became an even larger phenomenon. Uh, I had never worked on a movie set with Jimmy Dean. That is, any movie he was working in, like East of Eden or Rebel Without a Cause. I was never on any one of those sets. And I met him only through a, uh, an accident, which was driving on Sunset Boulevard one, one early morning, like 7.30 a.m., a motorcycle, a guy on a motorcycle, was coming through a red light, Laurel Canyon, which empties into Sunset Boulevard, and I couldn't believe my eyes. He was, he was on a collision course with me, and I jammed on my brakes, and the guy on the bike 
jammed on his. We both careened, and as the guy got up off his bike, which had sort of fallen over, uh, he had this big, wide, dopey grin, and it turned. It was Jimmy Dean, and uh, I, 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 then I recognized him. Anyway, I before before he came up with that grin, I had called him every profane word I could think of, and anyway, with that dopey grin, we ended up having breakfast at the Schwab's drugstore, which was 20 feet away. And it was there that I invited him to come over to Goldwyn Studios, where I had a gallery where I was shooting Sinatra and Brando and Gene Simmons on Guys and Dolls. And he did come over. He, he accepted the invitation. And that's where I got those pictures of him in that frame, as well as many of the other pictures I got of him at Oogie's, the coffee shop with his cronies, he used to hold court there. And uh, that was my meeting, that was my introduction to Dean. Brando was, my first contact with Brando was on that life assignment, which was to cover him that day, uh, <clears throat> the day of his award, Academy Award for uh, On the Waterfront. And then I worked with him on Guys and Dolls, and I worked with him on a couple of other pictures. Marilyn Monroe, was one subject that I wish I had more opportunities to photograph, but I had to make do with what I had. And uh, the Shrine Auditorium of December 1953 was an event that she attended among other celebrities. It was a benefit show for the Los Angeles Children's Hospital. And there were many other photographers there. And my problem was to try to get some fresh material on Monroe and backstage, while she waited for her turn to go on, <clears throat> is the opportunity given to me. And I just stood there with my eye glued to the camera finder, watching her, and also watching what the other photographers were doing. And my problem was to get fresh material, another point of view, that other photographers were not getting. So I watched for every little thing that she did, every little nuance, every little expression. And to the best of my knowledge, I shot things that I thought I was reasonably certain that were not gotten by other photographers. Also, my problem was graphics, the problem of getting the image of her blonde hair, her very light skin, her white gown, and her white fur to show up against a a suitably dark background, the darker the better, so she would read and stand out. And the opportunities for that were very fleeting. One moment I had it, one moment I did not. So it was a constant struggle. And I must say that I'm glad that I went through this ordeal because it did work in the sense that today, the material I shot at that backstage shrine room uh, is being used today over and over again and God knows how many posters, books, uh, illustrations of all kinds. And uh, th I mean, that's one case where the attentiveness and the perseverance paid off. <laughs>